Chapter 35 Oakland was my home, my life forever changed. The sudden and shocking happenstance, having been ripped from the womb and rushed to my kin in such violent fashion, no longer bothered me. This was the masterful stroke of our intelligentsia, to hide us out amid the rising tide of humanity, our children, like flora and fauna, floating in their ecosystem to keep us unharmed. And then, before it became all too clear who we truly were, to do whatever was necessary to intervene and bring us back into the fold, deluxe. Everything was beginning to make sense. I had grown to love Freddy. He took care of me. I wanted to stay with him. He didn't make excuses. Not for himself, not for anyone. And I cared deeply for Bless. I never knew a sister before I met her. They were both above the kind of petty human nonsense that gets in the way of true loving kindness. Lies and excuses, all inspired by fear. Nights were my favorite time to roam. Once I realized I both desired and needed to, there was a restlessness in me only roaming could unravel, a preponderance of unsettling complications in my mind could only be uncomplicated by lacing up my boots, getting on my feet, grabbing the long multi-cell baton of a black flashlight, my knit cap, and steady walking out the shed, down to the corner, where the corner girls I came to know solicited the prowling men out on the hunt, exchanging bittersweet glances, and down the alleyways, making my way north past Highland Hospital, where Oscar Grant exhaled his final breath, up and down the small and rolling hills just south of the lake, down the final one to where the Parkway Theater stood, and where decent, common people came to watch independent films or concerts, join in activism, or just gather on the couches and lounge, get away from the corporate push of billboard-laden marketing campaigns leeching this city as any other. Then I would pass by the bar and lounge down there just across from the grocery store and Merritt's Bakery, where I first found a place in my heart for Freddy, and exchange evil pleasantries with some sodded monster or two unwilling to go in and spend a couple of bucks for a beer when they could get a half pint of the cheapest vodka from the tobacco store next door, or Chinese no-name brand cigarettes, or maybe just save their money and collect snipes off the ground over the stumbling course of any chemical-driven day. The repartee left me laughing before I walked away. On to nowhere special sometimes unaccosted, sometimes misread for a mark or a fool, and got mixed up with some old jag. Eye to eye, toe to toe, I would see how far they wanted to go. And if they wanted to take it to another level, damn right I would defend myself, maybe find their stash of the element to satiate me. I roamed east along the lake, past the Grand Lake Theater, with its bright lights, big city marquee, eternally etched in my strange, recent memory. How I woke up to the world, painted by voices in my head all those years, with the colored neon lights pissing down on me, to the smell of dead leaves mixed with urine and tobacco and leather, in a van next to the total stranger who brought me here, who, in only a few months really, earned my trust and became the dearest one in my life, and whose misdeed I had forgiven. The grand theft of me was no misdeed. I was on this blood-soaked blue-green mystery marble for good reason. Best to disengage from existential reflection and leave the past in the past. Try and embrace all of who we are, all we had been given, and all we are becoming. 
the end.